Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Monster Factory Professional Wrestling. Let's go up to Derek K. Lewis. This is the first of 295 pounds, Becky Lowe, Henry, the Anastasia, Superstar, and the Superstar. Oh, before uh, Derek T. Lewis kind of hopped in there, I'm for Ron Burgundy and alongside Derek K. Moore. We've got a great night of action here for you. Veron, I cannot wait to get into this. It's the whipping post, man. It is. It is definitely the whipping post. That is coming a lot later, but we've got tag team action to get things started here. Indeed we do. A new tag team tandem forming here tonight, potentially. we got the Estonian superstar Henrik teaming up with Nikos Rikos. Been making a lot of waves in the professional wrestling world lately since his NXT debut. And let's see how he's going to fare tonight here at Monster Factory Pro Wrestling. We will certainly see. There's certainly a Euro connection to be sure. But we'll see how they do against the folks from down in South Philadelphia. Could there be a more fitting team to take on a European duo? And with that, here come the wise guys. from the crowd here as we're certainly in South Philly country. They're loving their wise guys tonight. They got themselves a couple of bats. Those are batons. At least, oh, well, one's got a baton and then Jimmy got his trademark bat. I guess Luca's got to graduate to the bat. He hasn't put in enough wise guy activity on the streets just yet. How about that jacket on Rocco? Beautiful new leather jacket he's sporting there. Bit of a fashionista. He's got the locks down, a new jacket. Styling and profiling tonight. Just when you think you've seen everything from Rocco, he gives you something different. Already smooth talking the rep as he always does. Luca getting down on his mandolin right now. They love working the crowd here, and the crowd loves to cheer for them. Jimmy wielding that bat like a pro. If he's not careful, Matt Klintak might hire him from uh, across the river in Philadelphia. <laughs> Good call, Ferran. Good call. Wonder how he plays outfield. Well, the two teams are already starting to judge act one another. Well, it looks like the ref are going to clear out the ring and get this match underway. Looks like we're starting off with the Estonian superstar, Henrik. And Luca Brazzi looks like he's going to be starting off with South Philly's finest. Referee making the final checks here on the line. And there is the bell, and we are ready to go. And you kind of a little loose and limber there, and a quick duck under, and nice waist lock takedown by Henrik. Henrik, wait, Henrik wasting no time to bring it into the wrestling. Nice gator roll. Manhandling Luca Brazzi right now. Oh, oh, wow. Really rubbing it in there. Not the smartest people to do that with. Case in point. Series of open hand chops. Now whip reversal and just charging in. That's why they call him the line. It's a hard running forearm catching Henrik right in the jaw. Tagging in Jimmy Conway now. Luke is going to inverted atomic oh. drop. Big boot from Jimmy Conway. They call that the drive-by. There's a cover. Just a one count. Oh, what a knife-edge chop. Sounding like a gunshot here in Paulsboro. Wow. Ooh. Suplex right by the ropes. Slingshot in. Grazzi. 
Lateral press only getting a two count there off of the spring, uh, uh, slingshot sent on. Henrik rolling back, tagging in Nikos Rikos now. Whoa! Spartan Pinball turned inside out with a beautiful arm drag. Right back to the tag to Conway. And this is where South Philly's finest shines. Probably one of the best tag teams when it comes to tandem offense. You see the cohesion right there. And elbow right to the chest as well as to the small of the back, but still not enough to take out the Spartan pit. Bull. Hard shot there from Conway to Nikos in the jaw. Tagging in his partner, Luca Brazzi. Throwing him in a oh, shoulder right into the start, the uh, midsection of Nikos Rikos. South Philly's finest really banging on all cylinders to stop this match. Oh, wait, wait a minute, this is Vicky up on the ropes. A little bit of a distraction there on Bronte. And oh, wait. Apparently had guy in the back of his head. Oh, Whoa, referee not seeing it. Henrik pulling Luca Bronte head first into the ropes. Hard swinging power slam from Nikos Rikos. Lateral pressing. Two and no. But Nikos Rikos now in control thanks to the visual assist on the outside by Vicious Vicky. And now the physical oh, assist here. as well. Come on, ref. You got to pay attention here. Vicious Vicky and Henrik just getting the one up when the ref isn't paying attention. It's not the cleanest way to wrestle a match, but they're blatantly on the same page right now. Nikos Rico's hard European uppercut into the corner. In comes in his tag team partner, the Henrik. Ducks under. STO. Number two. Only a two count there. Brazzi has a lot of endurance. Indeed he does, and the crowd now getting behind Luca Brazzi, trying to help him fight back. Henrik cutting him off with the knee to the midsection. Right back to the corner. You know, this team of Nikos Rikos and Henrik, we may have never seen them before, but they are working together quite well. Hard body slam onto Henrik's knee. Nikos Rikos now looking like he's playing with Luca Brazzi in the middle of the ring, hammering him right back down with a shot across the shoulder blades. Oh! oh. Another stiff shot right to the back of Luca Brazzi. Luca being beat down, now stomping on the fingers. I was say, it was not too long ago, maybe a few months ago, that Henrik had faced off against Nikos Rikos not once but twice and fell on the short end. And perhaps Henrik's figuring that if you can't beat him, join him. Well, sometimes in those type of one-on-one -on -one contests, you don't, well, you don't realize that the person standing across from you is not only your opponent, but you could potentially have some sort of gelling happen. I think they got together backstage, recognized something in one another, and now we're seeing if they can work together as a unit. If you ask me, they're working pretty smoothly right now, and their first showing is a tag team. Henrik blatantly telling his opponent to come in and help him. Oh, a knee right to the back of the Beautiful head. reversal there by Luca Brazzi, dropping a knee on Rico's to break the, his grip on him, and then catching Henrik with a neck breaker. Low bridges to the outside, and there's the tag to the Jets. Here comes Jimmy Conway. There's one. Catching him now with the axe kick. Another axe kick for Nikos Rico's is trouble. Ducks under. Oh! Drops Henrik right on his, on his partner. Jimmy Conway all fired up, and he's got this crowd behind him. Oof, stiff shot to the jaw, sends Nikos Rikos down to the ring apron. Goes for the axe kick, misses. Right hand, oh, oof, tandem right hands. The referee's got to get control here and get one of these guys out of the ring. They're really taking advantage here. Oh, Luco Brazzi now going to the top rope, high rent district. Wow! Double drop kick from the top rope, takes out both Rikos and Henrik. Oh, wait a minute. Conway looking for the fish hook. Vicious Vicky now stopping at right in his tracks. Enough of a distraction to catch. Wait a minute, there's oh, one whoa. to the outside. Oh, 
Oh, wait, now Vicious Vicky giving chase to Rocco on the outside. Oh, Nico's almost connecting with his sweetheart there. Rocco now talking trash to Rico's might not be the best course of action here. Oh, and Rocco taking the low road real quick. Gotta give Rocco credit. He's so good at getting under his opponent's skin. Uh-oh. Here comes Slice Scarlet Bread. With the assist from Jimmy Conway. Conway ducking under, catches Henrik, stepping through. Oh my gosh, I haven't seen this in ages. The Molotov oh, Frog cocktail. Splash. The Frog Splash. Into the sharpshooter. And the victory. South Philly's finest going into their playbook and busting out the Molotov cocktail. A, mo a tandem move who has won them numerous matches and championships and is paying off for him here tonight. The following contest is set for one fall. The introducing us, hailing from the place of leading light, weighing at 165 pounds, Marvelous! Well, Marvelous making his way out here at the MFPW. Probably more mysterious than Marvelous, at least in the early going. In the place of living light. Hey, listen. When you're walking around with a name like Marvelous, you gotta have you gotta you gotta be from somewhere. You know, that supersonic championship, you know, to, to uh, Freddie Flamingo. You know, Max Rose was trying to climb the ladder, you know what I mean? Trying to get back to the top, you know, where he once was. I mean, maybe getting that supersonic title back or potentially going for that heavyweight championship somewhere down the line. But I think getting in there with, uh, with, with the likes of Marvelous, this should definitely be just one in the win column, he'll definitely be back on track. Uh, he did fall short not too long ago, just barely challenging for the heavyweight title against Getty Cahoon in that four-way with Ricky Reyes and Nikos Rika. So he's definitely been reaching those runs, but just falling a little bit short. Maybe this will lead to something a little further. As the bell sounds here, in order to do so, he's got to get through Marvelous, who is uh, uh, quickly cornered here by Classy Max Sterling, but rolls out of the way, gets ahead of steam, ducks the clothesline over to the other side. Oh, of the whoa, man. Classy one. What a snap suplex by Classy Max Sterling. Aggressive here tonight. Oh, kick right to the bread basket. I think he's frustrated uh, given the condition. Oh, oh has to my break his goodness. Just by walking. What a clothesline. Clothesline cover to it. There was Probably nothing, I gotta say, there was nothing classy about that clothesline. That was mean, with mean intentions. You can be mean and still have class. Well, depending upon whose perspective it is, if you're on the receiving end, that ain't classy. Oh. I guess again, it depends on who it's from. Here's the cover after a knee and two count, just barely. Yeah, there's no shenanigans tonight from Matt, from classy Max Sterling. You know, usually the mind games and everything of the sort. Tonight, he's all business against the marvelous one. He needed a bat. And perhaps that that aggression coming from falling just short of becoming a heavyweight champion. Now a little bit more determined, a little bit more. Oh, you hear him saying, what did you think was going to happen? Uh, that's, that's not arrogance. That's straight up confidence. Look at his eyes. 
laser focus. Oh. A little bit of a fight for Marvelous here, but oh, oh wow. Double underhook suplex launches him three quarters of the way across the ring. Now just standing right on him. There has been zero offense from, from Marvelous at all. Classy Max Sterling is on a tear right now. Well, he's been attempting to fight back, but the moment that he shows any sign of offense, Max just pounces right back on him. I mean, the fight has certainly been there. It's just every effort by Marvelous has been immediately shut down by the classy one. You can hear the crowd behind Marvelous, and here he is attempting to fight back. Duck the clothesline. And Steam ducks the first oh. advantage, but a boot right in the bread basket. What did you think was gonna happen? Oh, wow! Whoa, 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 whoa! I knew it. Hurricane Rana, head scissor takeover. The Marvel's gonna head is. Oh, my! Too much time to recover and running face first right into the heel of the boot. Good God. What a shot to the face by classy Matt Sterling. I think it's safe to say it's just about to be over. Wrenching the neck. There's a cover two and the three count. Oh. Ooh, we look the match by a beautiful classic Max Sterling. Well, there you have it. Oh, now Samuel just adding insult to injury, trying to take him out of the ring after the fact, clearing the ring for classy Max Sterling with a very decisive victory here over Marvel. It's tonight at the MFBW. Oh, my goodness. 
I would not want to see that jumping at me, that's for sure. Even the referee is a bit thrown off. You gotta hand it to Dr. Carl Martin, though. The treatment he's given Michelle has transformed her into one of the top stars here at Monster Factory. Tonight, getting a shot at some Monster Factory gold. In order to do so, she'll have to go through the crowd. <laughs> called Jafar, one of the fastest rising stars here at Monster Factory. Shocking a lot of people when he won the MF Network Championship. Defeating Michelle in order to do so. But if we're gonna look at the tape with clear eyes, we cannot discredit the fact that he had some help to win the title from his manager, Benjamin King. Yes, the mysterious figure with the uh, cloth rag, and not forgetting also that was a gauntlet match, so prior to facing Jafar, Michelle had to go through Nikos Rikos, had to go through Soriano just to get to that match. And, and take, taking on those men one-on-one, -on -one, never mind a gauntlet, is enough to wear you down. Tonight, Michelle finally getting to go that 100%. I'm taking Michelle. I think she's got everything it takes to be a champion here at Monster Factory. But it's that odd man on the outside, Benjamin King, the visionary of the prowl. I thought you were talking about Dr. Carl Martin. Well, Dr. Carl Martin has always been an ace in the back pocket of Unstable, so to speak. But how often have we seen somebody opposite Dr. Carl Martin that could potentially match not only vision, but also wit? So it almost negates the two, and it just comes down to who has it in the ring, and we will find out momentarily. Jafar certainly taking his time getting into the ring. Holding on to that title like it's the most precious thing he's ever had in his entire life as he stares at Michelle because he knows Michelle has what it takes to take this championship off the champion's waist. Well, Michelle certainly uh, appreciative, we'll call it that way. And there is the bell. The, the crowd clearly has their favorite tonight. You can see Jafar, we'll say hesitant. Like every opponent Michelle has ever stood across from, it's a hard puzzle to solve when you stare that face right in the eye. See, like, how do you combat that? Even the ref wants nothing to do with yeah. Michelle. I guess Jafar figuring that the best offense is a good defense. Or at least an easily accessible defense in case of the ropes. Is Jafar asking for a test of strength here with Michelle? Oh, looks like that's exactly what he's going for. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, I think Michelle was a little hungry there, and uh, Jafar having none of it. And not the test of strength Jafar was looking for at all. Well, you hear the crowd referring to Jafar as a coward. And Jafar certainly not liking that. It looks like he's gonna have to overcome quite a few mind games tonight, not just from Michelle and Dr. Carl Martin. He's gonna have to overcome this crowd who is clearly in full force in the corner of Michelle. Oh wait, Michelle now on the outside, poised and waiting. I don't think Jafar, Jafar even sees it. Having words with a few of the fans in front here. Oh, he sees her now. And the chase is on. 
Jafar doing laps around the ring. Sliding back in. Here comes Michelle. Going through the ropes. Oh! Well, luckily it shouldn't hurt her as much as it would hurt most competitors here at Monster Factory. Still enough to slow her down. Yeah, any kind of forceful blow to the inner thigh like that will certainly do that. Far now, Irish whip out of the turnbuckle, sends Michelle reeling it up. Oh! Michelle bouncing off hard forearm now. Another clothesline sends Jafar down to the canvas. Now Michelle's got him up. Looking Can, for delights out, possibly. Can she hook him, and she's got it! Can she get the cover? This could be a new champion. One, two. Jafar kicks out. For Ron, I can honestly count on one hand how many superstars have kicked out of that maneuver. Not many. I'm quite shocked Jafar even got, a, got up after a two count. Following yeah, up with a jawbreaker. You're right, very few kicking out of the modest driver. Jafar now got her up on his shoulder. Michelle wiggles out. Shoots him off into the ropes. There's oh! the lights out. Lights out. One, two. Oh, Benjamin King wow. getting Jafar's foot up on the rope. The ref does not see it. This is exactly what I was talking about. Dr. Carl Martin is probably the last manager we've seen that was always in the right place at the right time. Benjamin King now in the right place at the right time for his client. Michelle having quite a few words for Benjamin King. She knows she had the championship right there had it not been for King. Jafar using the distraction catches Michelle upside the head with a stiff shot. But you can see Jafar not with much behind those shots after taking both the modest driver and the lights out. I can't and even believe he's on his feet right now, let alone throwing shots. Still into this thanks to that manager, Benjamin King. Jafar and Michelle now trading blows. It looks like Jafar is getting the upper hand here. Jafar calling for his championship title. The ref trying to stop him from hitting. Jafar looking like he's throwing out the rule, but goes for the shot with the title, misses. Oh, wait a minute. Are we, are we gonna Could see the kiss of death? Oh, Nothing. wait a minute. Jafar blocking. Rank to the eyes, right in front of the ref. I'm surprised the ref letting that slide. Oh, what a low blow. The ref not letting that one slide. Blatant low blow in front of the referee. This is clearly gonna give Michelle the victory here by disqualification. Well, Michelle's picking up the victory, but here at Monster Factory, titles cannot change hands in a disqualification. Is, 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 a, is a great hand to tell you right now. Twitch is nothing to toy with. He's gonna have his hands full, that's for sure. Well, he is 
certainly fired up. He is amped up. And they take on somebody like the Croatian sensation, he better be. Well, I gotta tell you right here, right now, you know, Lucas, again, he wants to have his name in the hat as well, as far as getting in line for a singles championship as well. He's been here a while, and we're gonna see what's gonna happen tonight, but I can guarantee you, this match is gonna be a half, that's for sure. Yes, you boys. Yes, you boys. Oh, there's the bell, and here we go. Yes, what is Tourette's? I guess he asked him, was he nervous? And he told him he asked Tourette's. There's a kip up from Twitch. And an arm drag, nicely done. Well, I guess uh, Mario, uh, I guess he got his uh, question answered. He is not nervous. Uh, perhaps underestimating the kid a little bit. And... Well, I can tell you right now. Ooh. Wow, a lot of illusion here. Oh. Wait. No, oh, whoa. Going there for the nervous breakdown. Ducks the clothesline. For a waist lock. It'll get some sec separation. It's Twitch. Wow, what a shot. Oh, slap to the back. Oh, what a neck breaker. Wow. Ooh, stomp to the head. That's got to hurt. Now he's toying with him. But I got to tell you right now, Twitch the Sango is not someone you want to toy around with, man. If you want to put him away, you better do it fast. Perhaps after the early flurry by Twitch, uh, Bokura, despite not knowing what it is, attempting to knock the Tourette's out of Twitch. Well, that's going to be hard to do. Back suplex there, cover two, and Twitch able to kick out, get the left shoulder up, and now he's hooking both legs, two, and no. There's no quitting this kid, Twitch, man. I've seen him in a lot of battles since I've been here at MFPW, and there's no quit in this guy at all. Well, I mentioned the tag team accolades earlier. Bokura, Twitch, also a former tag team champion. Absolutely. Here in the MFPW, and also looking to rise in the singles ranks. Well, so this again. match important for both competitors. Well, absolutely. Right now, we've got to understand who's going to separate themselves from the pack. As I said before at the beginning of this contest, you know, you, you, you have um, yeah. Mario Bacara, former tag team champion. Twitch the Sangro, former tag team champion. Who's going to separate themselves from the pack? And I guess we'll get those questions answered at the end of this match. Wow, now Bokra using Twitch's own arms for leverage here. Oh, but a knee right to the back, and back oh, wow. down goes Switch. Oh, what presence of mind, but not enough to get the three. That was very, very, very close. We, we were one, uh, a split second away from um, having Mario Picara come out the victor in this contest. Oh, oh wow, slap to Twitch. Yeah, you don't want to do that. Oh, another one. Uh-oh. See? I think that just made him angry. Yeah, an angry Twitch is not a fun Twitch to be around. Oh! Impervious to pain right now. A whole lot of drilling running through Twitch. What is that? What is this? Thank you, sir. May I have another? Sure seems like it. I've seen that somewhere before. Twitch has officially lost his mind. Oh, man. Oh, what hey, a man, That was a left forearm from Twitch and another. Oh, European uppercut by Twitch the Sangro. Oh. Oh, 
Oh, seems to have lost, he, lost control here. He has lost his everlasting mind. Even the crowd doesn't know what to make of it. Can you blame him? Charging in oh, a big boot, Haluba kick. Oh my god! Oh, knee to the face! What? What? Wait a minute, what's Vicious Vicky doing out here? Wait a minute. What is this? Nico Srikos and. Henrik, the Estonian superstar, but oh, oh what a German! Suplex. Oh wow! Oh, and there's the oh, cross face. The cross face. Oh wow! Oh, just slapping wow. on the back. Oh, oh and now it's cinched in. He doesn't even have an arm to tap. Your winner of the match by submission. Well, there you have it, the distraction by this European connection. It looks like we have another member to the truck to them now. The duo has become a triad. I mean, what is this spell for the future of my connection for wrestling with this trio right here, right now? Well, here's a face that we haven't seen in over a year here in the MFPW. It has been quite a while since we've seen Sage, but he's walking right back into a title match, so he clearly hasn't lost much steam with the company. The kid is always game, always ready to go. Definitely a good competitor for the middleweight medallion championship here tonight. Well, absolutely. He was the inaugural middleweight medallion champion here at the MFPW. Indeed he was, and you better believe he wants his middleweight medallion back. But Tyga has done quite a good job defending it, and I'm pretty sure he's not in the mood to give it up tonight. There it is, that primal growl we hear from the music, which means it's time for one of the members of the Prowl to come out. We see him here, the kingpin of professional wrestling, Benjamin King. The Prowl holding 50% of the gold here at Monster Factory. Everyone in that faction, just a game player. Tiger Watson, certainly one of them. The undefeated of the East, a new moniker has been taken on now by Tiger Watson. Let's face it, he has been on quite a good reign as his middleweight medallion champion. Over a year. Hopefully it hasn't gone to his head, but we'll find out once this bell rings. You have to wonder, is the only reason that Tiger has been middleweight medallion champion because Sage has been elsewhere? It's a very valid point there, Farad. The inaugural middleweight medallion champion and Sage Matthews. Sage doesn't seem too impressed with the current champion. A very calm demeanor, start almost sauntering over in his corner. A little bit more 
arrogance than the last time I've seen him. A little bit more confidence, I guess. Maybe not arrogance, but... Certainly. There's definitely a little more strut in his step what here tonight. To there is the bell, and... Well, Tiger trying to get the crowd behind him, and uh, rather futilely. And now a handshake here by Sage. Sage show. Oh. Sage trying to be a good sport. Tiger not having anything of it. Well, here we go. And just a nod of acknowledgement. All right, now I now I see how this is going to be played as they tie up now. Arm ringer here by Sage, and now Tiger with a quick reversal. A little lock of his own. Roll through, kip up. Wait, another kip up. And third. Okay, trifecta of kip ups and leg trip, and down goes Tyga. Oh, and he offered a hand to help him up, and Tyga wants none of that either. One of Sage's greatest aspects being shown there, his speed. Three kip ups in a row, it's almost hard to react, and it took Tyga right out of his realm. Ducks the kick, Side kick. jumps the, the sweep, blocks the kick again, cartwheel out of the way. Sunder puts Tyga on his back again, rolls him through. Goes for a big hit. Wheelbarrow roll through. Sage stepping up. Oh! Double stomp to the midsection, and the champ rolls to the outside. Sage Matthews hitting the middleweight medallion champion with a bit of unorthodox offense there, confusing the champion. Put him right in the perfect position to hit him with that wheelbarrow roll through. There goes Sage. Sage. Oh, he anticipated the roll out of the way. Now Benjamin King. Benjamin King. Here's the thing about King. He's a big boy to be a manager on the outside. I don't know. Perhaps that wall of a man shouldn't have moved out of his client's way because now Tiger put right back down to the floor. Matthews rolling in to break the count, now going back out to get his opponent, Tiger Watson. Well, he knows that the title can only change hands inside the ring. Oh, he certainly doesn't want to keep it on the outside. Rolls the champion back inside. Sage now coming back in. Oh, and now just... Benjamin King looks like he just pulled at the foot of Sage Matthews as he tried to roll back in. The ref saw it giving Benjamin King a warning, but he's still got the challenge oh, with... Oh! Tiger taking advantage and diving through. Tope Suicida between the bottom and second rope. Knock the challenger into the front row. What a knife edge chop. Oh, now the challenger answering back with one of his own. Stiff right hand sends the challenger back into the ring. Here comes the champion keeping hot pursuit. Hard boot to the head trying to keep the pressure on the challenger is Tiger Watson. Oh, wow. Another vicious knife edge chop. Stiff forearm shots in the corner here by the champion. Scoops him up. Oh, oh. hanging him up in the tree of woe, it looks here. Tough position for Sage to be in here. Tiger now going up to it. Oh, wait oh, a minute. Oh, my dear God. Referee Come on, ref. Very lax with the rules here. Gotta break that. Sage might want to have kids someday. Good Lord. What a vicious move there by Tiger Watson. Referee having every right to disqualify Tyga, but being very lax here to... What an Irish whip from one corner to the other. Takes the challenger right off his feet. Cover two. Only a two count. Yeah, good on the referee to give at least a little bit of latitude as we saw a blatant low blow earlier cost another title match. Here comes Sage fighting back now. Knife edge chops of his own. Big Mongolian style chop. A hard eye rake. Tiger really bending the rules here tonight. I mean, don't get me wrong, I get it. A championship is on the line. You gotta be a little lenient, but how much more is the ref gonna let this go? Tiger Watson running right into a hard elbow, running back into a boot now by the challenger. Sage Matthews. Going over the champion, hard pump kick. 
Sage Matthews with feet of fury right now. Just keep putting Tiger Watson down to the canvas. Cross corner, full head of steam. Wow. Hard European uppercut connects right on the jaw. Snapmare. Oh, oh, another European uppercut, this time to the back of the head of Tiger Watson. The champion is reeling on Dream Street. Oh, looks like Tiger catches him. Ducks, the kick. misses the kick. Rip board forearm. Connects right in the nose. But not enough to put away the champion. Just a hard hitting back and forth contest here between the champion and the challenger. Here goes Sage, springboard off the second. Oh, oh springboard Connor. That could do it, here we go. One, two, and, oh, was that three? Was that? Nope, the ref saying he got that his shoulder up. My dear God, I thought we had a new champion there. The ref calling the two to the timekeeper, making sure they don't ring that bell. I don't going think up to the top. Can you get any closer to winning a championship there, Ferran? I think not. Sage going for a 450. Rolls through. Tiger ducking under. Oh, oh spinning sp heel kick. And it connects right on the button. Tiger being a pretty lackadaisical to go for a cover. Doesn't go for a cover. He's getting the medallion. Following in the footsteps of his prowl member, MF Network champion Jafar. Wait, what is this? Is, that, is Davey Bly? Davey He's, Bly coming down to the ring, stopping Tiger from breaking the rules. Sage almost catches Davey. Oh no! Drop kick. Tiger drop kicks him into it. Schoolboy roll up. He's got oh. the trunks. He's got the three. Bly doing coming out here. I know that him and Sage are friends, but he, well, he's I, had some issues to say the least with Tiger Watson dating back to the MF Network Championship qualifying battle royal. But now is not the time. One could easily argue he just cost Sage the middleweight medallion. You could also argue that he was trying to help Sage and that he was, you saw it. He, no, you're Tiger right. On. Had, yeah, Tiger had the middleweight medallion in hand and was ready to strike the Sage with it. You're right on the money there, Ferran. And I get it. Davy's heart is in the right place, wanting to make sure that a championship is, de is, is decided by sticking to the rules. But there's a time and place for everything, and I don't know if this is the time for Davy to come out and stick his nose in Sage's business. How much of it was sticking his nose in Sage's business and how much of it was taking care of unfinished business with Tiger?